Just a little love, a little kiss. Just one hour that holds a world of bliss. Bye, you've got sweaty hands. <laughs> Can you recommend something? <laughs> My sweet fragrance. Do you know, I've had more propositions these last few days than you've had turkey butties, and not one of them from somebody sober. You'll have to get Eddie Duncan on to him when he gets back then, won't you? I'm glad you said when. I think him and Dave have gone to rob a bank. They're taking advantage of all these bobbies sleeping the Christmas pudding off. <laughs> She's all right, he's back. All this has a laugh. Mm. You had a good Christmas then, have you? Not especially. No. I've not neither, really. What's been your problem? Well, uh, I think being on my own as much as anything. I mean, it, it, it's true what they say about Christmas. It's more of a family time. But if you know family, well... You know, I don't think I've ever had a really Merry Christmas. I mean, a cracking good Merry Christmas. Oh, surely you must have. Have you? Oh, no, not that I can think of. Well, except when I were a kid. But even then, the lad next door only seemed to get bigger and better presents than me. He used to upset me no end. I remember some roller skates he had. I remember one year going to an all-night party on Christmas Eve. There was a young chap there. Kind of more than 18. He drank a whole bottle of port, passed out under the piano. He was still there when I left next morning. I suppose he had a Merry Christmas. You're considering doing that yourself, are you? Very drunk, sound in the mood. I think I'm too fed up even to get decently drunk. Yeah. Yeah, you can get like that. She's not that from the loo yet, either. Just one thing, though. I'm asking. Well, if he refuses you, I'll have a go. The next dance, ladies and gentlemen, will be a lady's choice. Right. Here I go. I hear him say it was a lady's choice, Gerald. I think you must be mistaken, Anne. <laughs> Impetuous man. <laughs> well, well, the wanderers return to the rovers return, and both of them grinning like a pair of vanillas as well. Right, I'll have a large scotch, please. <laughs> Eddie? Same. Please, Dave. Dave, what's going go on? Just go and do your thing, will you? But, uh, you heard the man. All right, be like that. Hey, she's dying to know what we've been up to. Keep them on tent hooks, that's my motto. Anticipation is the better part of realisation. Well, maybe not always. Does it strike you like a rainy afternoon in Le Levensium in here? Uh, it is a bit dead. <laughs> See if I can brighten it up a bit. Right, what are you having? Uh, no, thanks, Mr. Smith. We're just off. Do I have a serious operation? Eh? Well, never mind. It was just a joke, you know. Maybe you're not. No, it's just going over to the community centre to see if Mrs. Sharples will let us have a game of snooker. Snooker? Yeah. On oh, Boxing Day. Hmm. Pass an hour on, won't it? Oh, yeah, it'll do that all right. Cheerio, Dave. <laughs> oh, dear. Where's his missus? Search me. Oh, that's funny. Stop. We are not here to brood on other people's troubles. We are here to celebrate. Definitely. Fancy. Well, aren't you going to ask us what we're celebrating? I couldn't care less. Oh, now she's retaliating. Very retaliatory uh, female mind. And what would you know about the female mind, Dave? You've never taken enough time off m making money to get to know one. Talking about money, I have just recouped on our athletic friend. Recouped? Yeah, got my investment back. Uh, with profits, as they say in the insurance business. How? 
Go on, tell her. I've been transferred to Torquay. Stop staring at her, Nelly. She's not likely to turn into a pillar of salt, you know. Well, look at her. She's not only dressed as lamb, she's acting like one. Oh, I think she looks very nice for her. Well, I don't. He's very nice. He's so manly. He must be half blind. Resting from the mad world of pleasure that passes as a religious festival called Christmas. No, me, I'm just having a cup of tea. Tea? Yeah, do you want one? But you're not allowed to drink tea for 15 days before until 15 days after Christmas. It's an indictable offence, you know. No, no, I didn't know. Well, you see, the breweries, who along with Mrs Whitehouse, constitute a great authority in the land, can have you quietly put away for drinking tea at Christmas. So, to save you from a garroting or a hemlocking, I bought you this. Thanks very much. Now, you think that that is a bottle of red wine, don't you? Well, I wasn't quite sure of the colour. Well, it's not. No. No, it's a bottle of vintage red wine. Oh, I didn't know. Now, think on, I want it all put in back, especially the billiard chalk. It's always getting pinched. All right, we'll leave everything just as we found it, Mrs Sharples. I should have thought you could have found something better to do than come round here on Boxing Night, disturbing me and the mice. Uh, obviously, we couldn't. Have you been thrown out or something? No, Jerry just suggested a game of snooker. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I see. Well, how long do you reckon it's going to take, this game of snooker? Why, are you thinking of going out? Because we can always lock up after it. No, I'm not going out. I've seen enough of the road the last few days to last me since Judgment Day. No, I just wanted to know how long you'd be, that's all. In about an hour? Yeah, yeah, say an hour. Well, say that's all you are, then, because I want to have an early night tonight. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And don't forget the chalk. If you try and grab me again, I'll duff you, I'm telling you. You are cruel. You know that. Very cruel. But right. <laughs> Very right. I don't know. The qualifications for this job are unlimited. Beauty, brains, a good right jab. Yeah, and I was just about to make an improper suggestion. Instead of which I'll have the same again. You are very wise. Uh, I'd like to make a statement about um, lover boy in there. Be my guest. Well, he's being transferred. It's uh, strictly a business deal, nothing personal. I never thought it was, Dad. Good. Because, um, well, I don't like an atmosphere where I drink, you know, you're going to have to let me off the drink. Sending Frank on his way was just a business deal too, weren't it? Right. There you are, then. How long is Mrs Walker likely to be bed? Oh, hours yet, love. Why? I'd like a word in private. Oh. Well, I'll see if Miss Nugent will take over for a spell. You do know what you're doing, do you? Yep. Just so long as you do. Specially ordered from a little woman I know in town. Just a back street shop, but oh, a superb baker. Obviously. What part of town do you live, Mrs. Walker? Oh, quite central, really. You know, I think you're wise. Commuting from the suburb becomes quite a nightmare these days. Oh, townhouses are the thing. They were good enough for the Victorians, weren't they? <laughs> Well, there's one thing about having a townhouse. It does save you the wear and tear of travel. And uh, how's the world treating you, Gerald? Oh, can't grumble, John. Still missing the Navy like hell, eh? Mm. Not as much as I did when I retired. Living near the sound of sea and ships, can't stand. And where might that be? Formby. Oh. Oh, he's got a lovely house. I'd buy it off him tomorrow, if he'd sell. You know, he's a great disappointment to me, is Gerald, Mrs. Walker. Oh? Hundreds of times I've tried to find him a lady partner, all to no avail. 
You're not married then, Commander? A widower, Mrs. Walker. Oh, I'm sorry. So the manager just said, pack your boots. You come in with me just like that, did he? Well, he... He asked me what I thought of the idea first, naturally. And what do you think about it? Great. Well, why? Is it a better club than this? Sure. But, I mean, they're in the same division, aren't they? Well, yeah. Well, I don't understand, then. It's more go-ahead. Oh, more pay, you mean? Yeah, and I, I collect a fair bit from your transfer as well. How much? A fair bit. KG. I'm over the moon. So you should be. Apart from one thing. What's that? You. But what have I got to do with anything? Will you come with me? To Torquay? Look, I'm away tomorrow. Will you come? Well, will you? A girl should have at least six months to answer a question like that, love. <laughs> seems to fancy she's some sort of Scarlet O'Hara. <laughs> really? And if she wants to keep the friendship of a certain somebody else, then my advice is to act her age. And uh, start fancying herself as Scarlet O'Hara. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well, perhaps this uh, certain somebody can't help herself, dear. Having been cast by fate in the role, she's just a pawn of circumstance. Why not find yourself a man, dear? Oh, <laughs> you asked for that, you know. I wouldn't care, but she's older than I am. I don't get it. Mm. I thought you'd have jumped at the chance. So did I. Look, I'm not, I'm not proposing marriage or anything daft like that. Didn't cross my mind you were, love. But what have you got to lose, then? I mean, if you don't like the scene down there, you can always come back. At least you've had a few laughs. I know that. Well, right, it's settled then. We leave tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We can, uh, stop off in London for the night, if you like. Tell them we're fog bound or something. Sorry, Eddie. Oh, come on, Bet. Stop playing hard to get. I mean, I know you're not, don't I? You're an arrogant pig, aren't you? Hey? You think all you've got to do is crook your little finger and I'll follow you to Timbuktu? To Torquay, love, not India. Hmm. Well, I've got a proposition to put to you. Proposition? Yeah. Tell Dave Smith and this manager that you're not going to talk here because I don't want you to. Oh, come on. You've got to be joking. I'm not. I can't. I see. So, in other words, talk is worth more to you than I am. It... Look, it's a chance to get back on top again. Sorry, Eddie. But why? Self-protection, love. You see, I don't mind going out with you around here. Because if you dropped me, I could always find a shoulder to cry on. But over there, I'd be like a lost sheep. Whatever you did, I'd just have to lump it. And I'm just not made like that. Please. But I never said that to a bird in my life. Try, dear. And good luck. Merry Christmas. Oh, certainly not for him. <laughs> Obviously. Have you had a Merry Christmas, Ken? No. Have you? Quiet. Oh, and congrats on your new job. Thank you. Talent will out. Has Alan been in? 
not seen him. All right, okay, well, I'll see you then. Uh, bye. Excuse me, miss. Would you care to join me in a game? <laughs> I'm afraid dice isn't my game. <laughs> it's not mine either. These were a Christmas present. In fact, just about my only Christmas present. Thank you. Thanks, Miss Eugene. I'll take over then. Now. Oh, thank you. Uh, Eddie's gone. I see. I think you've been very wise. You don't break a lot of pots being wise, though, do you, Dave? True. Well, I suppose it's time I turned back into a coachman and collected Barbara Cartland from the ball. Oh, I forgot uh, you won't be going out in the town there now, will you? Don't be silly. I've got my eye on this bloke who plays tiddlywinks. Oh, it's only a very modest house, Gerald. Modest, but friendly. A sort of happy family. Exactly. <laughs> That's one of the things that makes this country for me. Pubs like that. I hate your fancy gin palaces. My sentiments to the letter. You know, I've had so many opportunities to move to something better. Somehow I could never bring myself to do it. I envy you. Oh. I really do. I must come and taste the quality of your beer somewhere. Well, according to some of my regulars, it is liquid bliss. In fact, one man is supposed to subsist off it entirely, nothing else. <laughs> now, when can I come? Ah. This office job I've got is virtually a sinecure. I could come at any time. Really? We'll have to arrange a day then, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, the next dance will be a spot waltz. Prizes have been generously contributed by officials and their friends. What did you give Nelly? You never said. Something for the bathroom. <laughs> Not a toilet roll. <laughs> Should we? My pleasure. You've not touched it? No. Have you and Alan had a row? I mean, I know Christmas is a good time for rows, as well I remember with Val, especially about money. Oh, so a row? No. Why should we have a row? Oh, certainly not about money, according to him. Oh? Oh, you're saying how well the garage is doing. Something about another hundred quid and be out of debt. Did he? Right. Well, there's only one thing for it then, isn't there? Hey. Beat him at his own game. Uh, uh, we uh, go to the Rovers because that's exactly what he's doing. He's holed up in some pub with some mates of his from the motor trade. I, I, I don't think so, Ken. Come on. Oh, see, I no, insist. honest, honest, Ken, I don't... Come on. I think it'll do us both a world of good. Paces forward. Halt. Right turn. Two paces forward. Halt. About turn. Stretch your arm forward. A couple nearest to it. Oh, it's not any Almost. <laughs> Next time for certain. This is my lucky night. Flattery. Don't look now, but there's a fella. I don't believe it. Hello. 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 What's this? A local Hello. meeting of the women's lib or something? <laughs> uh, what are you having? All I'll the see. usual. Look. Uh, Maggie? No, not for me. Thanks. All right, well, that's uh, gin and tonic and a pint then. Right. right. Do you, uh, do you notice anything different about me? Oh, you're looking very sharp. Yes, well, we're at the di this, uh, this dinner dance, you know, me and Cyril. All of a sudden, it started to go green. 
Christmas tummy, you know. Half an hour later, I was back at home and in bed. And I got nowhere to flaming well show off, only the rovers return. <laughs> well, that's tough, isn't it? Mm. Uh, what's your excuse for not hitting the highlights tonight, Maggie? Oh, just got nothing on, as per usual. What's yours, Elsie? Same as yours. Bye, Eck. Am I glad I'm getting out of here? Of course, you could always go and play a snooker, Elsie. Snooker? Yeah, that's where Alan is, with Jerry Booth playing snooker at the community centre. Would you like me to nip and... No. Happy New Year. <laughs> He's left me, Ken. Any second now. Oh, I doubt it. I've never won a spot prize in my <laughs> life. <laughs> Five paces forward. Halt. Left turn. Two paces forward. Halt. About turn. Three paces forward. The couple nearest to you. Oh, do let's so. Mine's either handkerchiefs or cigarettes. Uh, I can't think of what mine can be. It's very bulky. Yeah, what did I tell you? Hankers. It's always hankers. <laughs> Just what I wanted. Lovely. Shall we sit down? <laughs> Oh, oh, it's definitely not your night, is it, love? <laughs> Should we try our luck again? No, thank you. The excitement has quite exhausted me. <laughs> now, don't tell me you're jibbing. And the night's still young. How young is it, by the way? Quarter to eleven. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I really must. Oh, no, I, I can't explain. I'm sorry I haven't time. Thank you for a lovely evening. But I'll take you home if no, you no, have to leave. No, no, someone's calling for me. But I... No, no, really, I must go. Thank you again. Where's she off at, full pelt? Search me. Unless she's having trouble with the corsets. <laughs> So sorry, dear Anne had to fly. Of course, that's one of the drawbacks of running a house on your own. <laughs> Tiny though it may be. Hey, she's left her handbag. Oh, we'll see that she gets it back, Commander. And the soap. If you don't mind, ladies, I'll return the handbag to Mrs. Walker. 